Hey guys, it's Monday, we're back from Monterey Car Week, and I was asked to do a video by Dr. Steve Harris, who's in London, is an amazing, very insightful, smart injector and educator, and uh, he is now asking some friends and colleagues to do a video asking what we've done to ourselves or what we would want to do. So we take our little faces and start to analyze all the things we've done and what we would want to do. So um, you guys can start guessing what I've done. You can go for it. I'll put up a picture just to start and we'll get an idea. So that's me. Um, I don't know when that photo was taken, but if you can see, I, I did a bit of a hair transplant. That's the first thing that I did. And that was done uh, a couple years ago. And I did the hair transplant first in New York, and then I did it back over here at my own office with my hair techs. And the transplant, if you look, looks like this. So I don't have much hair before. I'm peeling right now because we were in Monterey Car Week. And the hair transplant was one of the best things I ever did. I didn't have enough hair to cover everything, so it's kind of a pick and choose where you want to lose type situation. So uh, the way it worked was uh, taking hair from over here we shaved it and did a follicular unit extraction where hairs are plucked out and then pop back into the top. So if you look really close, uh, it doesn't look 100% natural because you don't have these little fine velas like peach fuzz over there, but it is natural enough and really uh, helped me look not so much older from the front. But if you look at my back, I still don't have much because there's not enough to share uh, over there. And you can see from the, the side view, big difference over in the density but again when you look towards the back I still don't have much so I'm saving the rest of the hair for a rainy day in case I lose more hair because there's only so much you can take and I've already taken uh, 2300 grafts the first time and then 2100 the second time so the plan for future is to either do scalp micropigmentation or uh, just wait and do more hair transplants so scalp micropigmentation is where you actually go do little tattoo dots and then that way the light doesn't reflect as harsh in photos and things like that so if you look at the picture again from the side you'll see what else potentially i've done and uh here you can see well i have facial hair in the second photo so it's hard to tell but i did profound profound is a neck tightening or a face tightening skin tightening that's uh, performed with a device that puts needles into the skin and passes radio frequency. And that helped a lot, uh, tightened up the jawline for me a little, tightened this area up, down over here, up in the neck a little, but uh, there's still more obviously, I can't really get a bigger improvement from a non-invasive, I'd have to do something like a weekend lift. And I would do that, I'm just uh, a little bit of a bitch when it comes to surgery, so they had to, uh, I'm not too scared of surgery. I did a tonsillectomy and survived that one. But you really got to trust somebody when you want to do this kind of neck stuff. And I'm always worried. So that's that. I've done Botox in my masseter. So these are your masseters right here. Your masseter goes from here to here. Behind it's your parotid gland. So if you look in my photos, I have a big parotid gland, which drapes across the neck a little. And I lose jawline definition because of that. Um, it's not something that I would put filler in. It'll just make it look fuller over there. So uh, a very uh, novice injector would probably recommend that, but that would just make you look fuller. Just uh, it doesn't work so well. So uh, you could Botox the gland to shrink it, but I Botox my masseter mainly for clenching and grinding, and it helped me a lot. What else have I done? So I've done bits of Botox here and there. Um, I don't touch my forehead because my eyebrows are already on the heavier side. Um, if you do Botox on the forehead, you inherently make your brows a little bit heavier because you can't lift anymore. So these are my muscles that are functioning. I like them, keep them functioning. And those lines don't bother me for now anyways. Uh, the other place I do Botox is right here, which you can see I'm out of it. So you see these little radial lines? This is the orbicularis oculi muscle. And the orbicularis oculi uh, has different parts. If you look at it from the front, there's the part that goes over your eyelid. Uh, and there's the part that goes over your tarsus and there's the part that goes around the rim. Uh, if you look at it from the side, you really have what we call above the canthus and below the canthus. Below the canthus is your uh, smile lines or your crow's feet. Above the canthus over here, those are your brow depressors. So 
uh, I've Botoxed these. I put Dysport. Jen usually does this for me. And it keeps the lateral brow from pulling down. Medially, I've done it in the corrugators as well, but I always leave some motion because I don't need to do that much. I like to have motion. Thanks, Mom. So I like to maintain motion. And this one I did myself the other week when my friends were in the office. So I just Botoxed myself right in the middle. That's an easy one to do where you're not going to mess stuff up too much. I don't recommend people injecting themselves because they, uh, well, they can move and you can have problems. So it's always better to have someone else inject you. But I'm overdue for this. Uh, see if Jen can do it. I've also Botoxed my nose before. So when you smile, you have a set of muscles that we call the septal depressor muscles and they grab your columella and it pulls your tip down a little when you smile like that and it flattens your tip. So for that, I've done Botox in the past and I've done it on myself. It hurts. It is not fun to put a needle into your own nose. Uh, so it's a little rough. There was a guy that looked like me in Prime 112. It wasn't me. I don't think so. Well, unless it was last year. And we're going to be back there in September or October or November for the Miami conference. But the other thing you could do is Botox over here, which I did once, which is for the flare of the nose, flare of the nostrils. So you see how like people look angry sometimes like that. You can actually Botox that to calm it down. The only issue with that is the, the tendency for your nose to resist negative air pressure when you breathe in, it goes away. So then when you breathe in, it collapses a little bit more. And that is... Uh, a compensatory movement that you're getting rid of which kind of sucks if you're exercising a lot so I think that's all I've done I haven't done anything else teeth are mine except for the back two had those fixed because I was grinding them so Matt Najad who's like an incredible dentist chopped off the top of the back two molars and covered them with new teeth and since then I actually stopped grinding because there is less contact um I've had my tonsils taken out. That really was fantastic because I didn't even know that I snored, but I did. And it improved, luckily. Most people uh, only temporarily improve in snoring, but I improved a lot. And I think that's all that I've done. I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, and I did a, a laser hair removal once, but it hurt so bad I never did it again. It was like back over here somewhere. Uh, Shervin did it for me. And that's it. So... Those are the things that I have done. The only thing that I really care to do in the future. This guy at some point, I wouldn't mind if somebody will tighten it up for me, uh, but it would require surgery. It's not gonna be something where heat shrinkage will do much more. I might uh, repeat the profound. I did it like four years ago and you could do it every four or five years. A couple of times, it's fine. Uh, I gotta redo PRP. So I do PRP uh, once a year or twice a year. And that's platelet rich plasma. I do that to slow my, my hair loss. Um, I don't take Propecia, it just didn't sit well with me. I used to take it, it didn't sit well with me for a while. And um, I did the Nanofat PRP with the hair as well. So drew some fat out of the abdomen, turned into a liquid, mixed it with the PRP and then injected that into the scalp. And that worked really nicely. I tried exosomes once too. And uh, that seemed to work a little bit too. A little bit of the peach fuzz grew back on the back, but I need to be a little more proactive and do it more often. And I think in the future, at some point, I'll do my lower eyelids. You can see I got bags under there. Uh, for now, I don't care. It makes me look tired, but that's good for work. People like respect you more. They walk in, they're like, wow, you look really tired. You must be working hard, even though I am. But, so those are the stuff I've done. Uh, let's see who else decides to share the things they've done. Most plastics, people are not, uh, ashamed to talk about it there is no shame in talking about it. as long as you look natural if you look fake you should be ashamed of everything uh, it's embarrassing so try not to look fake and look natural and you can talk about it with everybody and that's actually what i see with patients too is uh, the ones that come out natural even though they were apprehensive about sharing it with friends uh, because there's you know some negative uh, stigma with it they did the procedures and they saw how natural they look and I'm talking about tons of people started just sharing it with everybody and telling the world about it, or at least they're close friends, you know, uh, even though they're not publicizing it on Instagram or something, they, they, they were telling a bunch of their friends. Um, try oral minoxidil. I, I probably won't be doing that. Uh, consider Morpheus. Morpheus is a good one, but I got Profound, and Profound works better for me for this kind of stuff. Morpheus is good for superficial and deep if you're trying to do it, but I don't really have any major skin issues to treat 
I kind of take it easy on my um, take it easy on my face. So people always ask what kind of skincare I do, and it's really almost nothing. Once a week, I use my oil, the Aura Silk oil. I use it for my ears too because I get little eczema, and I don't like eczema. And um, every once in a while, if my house is dry, I use the the uh, Eucerin moisturizer, the the red top one, which is a, a really really nice one. And then that's all. Uh, if I ever were to start washing my face, I'd have big problems because my flora would get upset and I'd start breaking out. Everybody should just look like official Julissa. That's that's really what what everyone needs to look like. So let's see, hopefully you guys will all share with your friends what you do so they don't feel embarrassed to talk about it. And when people aren't embarrassed to talk about things, they end up getting better advice. So uh, it's one of the reasons I think so many doctors, sorry, so many actors and actresses who have access to everybody end up going wrong is they go to the wrong practitioner because of be super secretive about it they don't tell anybody they don't talk to anybody about it and then you end up getting no good recommendations uh, so sharing is good and this is actually how I come up with a lot of my ideas is I start talking about my ideas when I'm teaching and the more you talk about it the more you share the more you end up learning so just throwing stuff out there uh, for me has always helped when is the Miami Clinic opening we have to open the West Hollywood one first which is gonna open soon in the next couple of months you can see actually earlier today I posted something uh, not where the clinic is but I posted some of the graphic type stuff we're gonna have outside it'll be cool and then Miami is next so I want to spend a lot of time in Miami Miami is one of the greatest cities and gotta live that boat life hope everyone shares and enjoy your day and feel free to challenge one of your uh, doctors to talk about what they have done and Julissa didn't accept the invite because she's getting her hair braided and looking crazy. Come on, man.